Do you want the rum? Age nine. Where do they under? Where do they learn? Where all of these little these magazines? Parts yeah, come from. Skateboarder. Skateboarder in the '70s was the skate magazine, and all the guys in those magazines are wearing Vans. So they were married back then. So why not revisit that now? These Vans are so red. The color is brown. It's insane. They're so raw looking. They, the collaboration has a off, it definitely has a 70s feel to it, which is cool, and retro is cool, bro. <laughs> well, Dave Dash, the publisher, was a great guy. Yeah, they, Dave was, ones. Dash fit him perfectly. He drove around a brand new bitch in 911 and... Dave Dash, editor of Surfer, also publishes the widest selling skateboarding magazine. The first time we spotted the potential was about November of 19... Skateboarder used to sell products. They used to have t-shirts and, you know, hats and patches and stickers and stuff. And so that's where the design of the Skateboarder collaboration today is based off of those old product shots in the back of Skateboarder magazine. We used to go up occasionally to the offices in Capistrano when they were laying out the mag. And this was prior to the internet. And there'd just be stacks and stacks of slides and, you know, visa files. And they'd go through and... The dynamics of action photography have helped to popularize the sport and given the young skaters their own hero. As far as photography, I think we tend to accentuate sometimes the radicalness of curves or movers to some degree because of the type of lenses we use, but for the most part, these kids are doing incredible things on skateboards. And all of a sudden we get a call, hey, I need you ready in 10 minutes, let's go shoot this stuff. And uh, which was kind of convenient, you wouldn't tell the editor of Skateboarder Magazine you didn't want to go shoot anything. The photographers at the time were capturing something that had never been done before and the progression of skating was just like going crazy. Older dudes like Duncan and them like this was the Bible to us. It, it was a whole new vocabulary. You know, we no one we we as kids had never or anyone had ever seen that before, you know, like you've seen a little bit in surfing, but all of a sudden like, well these guys are skateboarding. This is a new art form, you know? And I could like get a skateboard and be a part of this mythical world. There was no internet, there was no video, there, you know, it was a bunch of kids making their own way. And I always think about these dudes like back in the 70s and shit, just pushing limits and just doing shit and whatever happened, happened. Your feet are fucking flailing everywhere and shit, it's sick. I was totally psyched to, to bring some of the lineage through. And there's such a cool archive there of imagery, especially like, I think there was a lot of Bolster stuff. I mean, Warren Bolster was a real photographer. Then you had Glenn Friedman, you had James Casmus, you had Goodrich, you had Craig Feynman, you had Ted Terba. And of course you'd always hear about the Stesic articles. That's what you'd always hear about. Stesic's photographs in the magazine were really cool. This photo is fucking awesome. Stacy, hair flip. Does it get any better than that? There are a couple pictures of uh, TA that were just out of control. I love those photos. Doubles routine in the 15 ball. Dunlop's carving backside, Sal was doing a frontside air, pretty impressive. My first skateboarder mag picture wasn't actually a picture, it was a poster in the skateboarder mag poster book. They made this little wave thing. This is like at Monarch Beach. Skateboard photography is so, it's just fucking, just like skateboarding, it's totally like renegade and just made up. There just, there were some really good photos. Then there were some really shitty photos, like all of the ones in my interview. Worldwide sales of Skateboarder magazine okay. are rapidly approaching the half million mark. We used yellow last issue. The yellow would work. You know, if we framed it with a uh, orangish red outline or something like that. Stacy Peralta is skating a, doing a bird on some janky ramp in the dark. Well, they always matched colors with something within the guy on the cover. I think. I mean, in the photograph, he's got red. The original red high tops. You know, they put a red band, you know, red around it and matched it to his shoes. And I remember getting that issue and just going, I need these red shoes. <laughs> if yeah. I have those red yeah. shoes, I'll yeah. be able to rip. They were pretty uh, color coordinated skateboarder. The blue one with Bowman, Hollywood Ramp. Oh, yeah. There are a couple. I like the Hackett cover. I was doing an alley oop, actually. And uh, I think on. it was about 79. Stesic and Friedman never had the cover of Skateboarder. That could be political reasons. Getting a Who's Hot was like a really big deal. That was like, I guess, like getting a cover of a mag back then. It was like, oh, you'd hear like, he had a Who's Hot. Like he was around, he had a Who's Hot. I like the uh, Greg Weaver cover, the first issue that came out. It's just like, whoa, dude's in a pool. We were, you know, modern skateboarder using 
this logo, this banner, you know, and stuff. And then the one of the most epic covers of all time, Mr. Lance Mountain. So I love just that feel, that kind of flourish, real picturesque, beautiful shots. They really had a great way of capturing motion and style. Skateboard magazine, come on. They say Thrasher is the Bible. Guess what? Skateboarder is the Quran of skateboarding, right? Oh, really? Just for a school interview? And we'll be done in five minutes. Five minutes?